doing? I'm doing great and I hope you are too. Well, it has finally happened guys. Photoshop has come to the iPad and it is available for download for you currently now. Uh, there is a free trial for you if you're not an Adobe Creative Cloud subscriber. But if you are, you can uh, download the full, full version and just get going on it. But I'm going to bring it up for you today, show you a little bit around. I've been playing with it around. It's not uh, a full feature like uh, some people are expecting. They're going to be adding new features along the way. And there's even a suggestion in the app itself for a feature that you'd like to see. So let's just jump on in and see what it's all about. So here I have the icon for Photoshop, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And like I said, I've been in it earlier before. So up here in the right hand corner you have a suggest a feature. Uh, also you can import and open uh, such files or photos that you may have on your device. I imported this Inktober 13 drawing earlier on. So I'm going to just go ahead and open that up just to get us started. As you can see I added a new layer to the side here and if uh, you look on the left right hand side you can either select a layer you can either show the layers in a compact size the next icon down you can show it in the expanded view and as you move along the layers you can also see the properties of that layer that is uh, available and showing it. You can even sh you can even see the properties that are currently showing on that layer there so let's go ahead and get rid of let's go ahead and get rid of the properties for now and maybe even so let's go ahead and just go back to minimize at the current time so we got our two layers on there I'm going to switch over to the other layer so now I have the layer that I've added currently on top of my drawing so as you can see on the other left hand side you have your home button which takes you back to there I'm going to go back to the drawing and as you can see on the left hand side you have your most common features such as selection you have your transform tool you have your lasso paintbrush eraser your bucket your healing brush you can do some cropping if you would like you can add some text you can import a file from your camera roll on your files your camera you can also select the color with the eyedropper and then down at the bottom here of the left hand side you have your foreground and background color and you just switch them back and forth just by swiping down on the little icons there so so if we were to go into the brush you can see you also have that option of the color swapping you can change the size of your brush you can change the opacity of the brush and down here you can also change the blend mode the roundness the angle flow smoothing using pressure and using pressure for opacity so I'm going to check those and then let's go ahead we'll keep it on the red go on to my other layer here and to see let's uh, increase the opacity just a little bit more you can see that it does have some sensitivity to pressure probably not the best brush to go let's see if we can select a different style brush if you do a long press on the icon with your finger or the pencil you'll bring up the other options that you have for that tool so let me just go to a hard round and bring it down a little bit and I think I'll go back you can go forward or backwards on these guys up in the right hand corner but let me just see See now I do have the sensitivity of getting soft and light marks. So it does have the Apple Pencil sensitivity. So we're just going to go ahead and close out of that. 
And let's change the color over to a blue. I'm not trying to be exact obviously on here. I just want to do a quick reference to this guy here from my Inktober drawing. And as we go over to the other left hand side again, we'll go ahead and close that out. And on the right hand you can also uh, add a layer to it. If you long press you get some other options. New group, adjustment layer, and such. So I have my new layer there. I'm going to make this guy active again. Uh, you can turn them on and off. You can do a, a mask on it. You can merge it down. And you can also do an Gaussian blur or invert. As you can see it inverted that. Let me go back invert it back to blue and then down here with the three dots you also have some layer actions lock layer delete layer rename layer so they have quite a few features in here I did notice earlier when I was playing around with it that there was some features that weren't available yet if you go up into the layer properties if you go into effects feature isn't supported on this device yet Smart filters and dimensions are not quite. Uh, but on dimensions, you do get your uh, width and height and x and y positions on that too. So those two features are quite showing up in the Photoshop. But like they said, they will be adding things down the road. So it does give you some basic features for now, just for playing around and everything with. Now if you notice this little circle here, that coincides with a few of the things that go on as far as the selection tool. So if I were to select that tool and do and press on this with the Apple Pencil, you can see I've selected my zombie layer there and I can move him in a constrained movement. I can move him around and duplicate him. Duplicate him again. I can keep duplicating that layer and keep moving him around. As you can see with that low guy dragging depending on which way you're going to the top of the circle you can duplicate you can move in a constrained area which means it can only go in a certain aspect diagonal on that one back and forth or up and down and I have several layers of this little zombie guy for my Inktober I'm going to go ahead and delete this top one. Just hit the three dots at the bottom. Delete the layer. Delete the layer. So now I'm down to three. I can move him around if I want. Move this guy back to there. And I'll put him right on top again. So there you have your three layers. You got some easy movement as far as that goes on. If uh, you notice there is no zoom on here so basically it's the iPad with the pinch and zoom so if you want to zoom in and zoom out put him back on there. So as you need to move in and out of your project you can zoom in and out and that will take you back to your home. So there you go guys just a quick look on uh, Photoshop on iPad. I just want to give you a quick overview. Like I said, not all the features are there right now. They are working to implement as time goes on. There'll be more and more features added to it. It won't be the full desktop version. Uh, it probably won't get to that point for quite a while if it ever does. But you are able to share whatever you do on this 
you are able to share whatever you do on your iPad to the cloud and then bring that cloud file down to your desktop version and do a lot more with it. So they have a suggestion feature in there if you're looking for a certain feature to be implemented into the Photoshop for iPad. So we'll work on that, see what we can uh, get them to do on there. But in the meantime, enjoy this little snippet of Photoshop on iPad. I think it will be a great supplement to the other apps that Adobe has on the iPad currently. I use Lightroom a lot. There's some things that you can't do in Lightroom on the iPad yet, so hopefully I can import that image back and forth from Lightroom, do the retouching for the photos that I'd like to do, and then put it back into Lightroom. So I'll be touching on that in the future. So I hope you enjoyed the little quick look at Photoshop on iPad that I just gave you here. Don't forget to like and subscribe below if there's any comments you'd like to make or questions that you have on the Photoshop for iPad or something you'd like to see me do or try to do with it. Please leave it below and I'll catch you next time. Have a good one guys. <music>